Hello guys, this is a quick news piece. A few days ago, Daniel Martinez Lara, one of the core team members of Blender Grease Pencil, tweeted that the open source drawing and animation tool was used to create some effects in the latest animated Spider-Man movie. Later came a tweet by Nick Kondo, lead animator of Across the Spider-Verse, to explain that in addition to the old spline or curve method upgraded from the first Spider-Verse movie, animators were also given the choice to use Blender for sketch and 2D animation effects, that to ensure that each animator could use the method that fitted their workflow best and felt more intuitive to them. The tweet implies that the studio found the new Blender method better, but preferred not to force it on artists who were comfortable with the old Maya method. But what does Blender bring that Maya doesn't? Scontreras Hosbio says he's a pipeline supervisor working on the Spider-Verse sequel, says that the new method made use of Blender Blender's grease pencil because it's ideal for freehand drawing and can handle huge amounts of strokes very well. A script was written to then generate geometry from grease pencil and take the Blender data back to Maya so artists could merge it with the rest of their scenes. With such complex animations, wouldn't it be easier to do it old school frame by frame? One, grease pencil can do 2D and even 3D frame per frame animation, and two, supposing it is easier, it's also much more time consuming. Once you have a procedural shader working, you can just slap it onto anything with minimal tweaks and it will work. Blender Grease Pencil proving itself again as a powerful tool capable of producing high-end animations comes at a time when it is undergoing a complete code rewrite to make it even more powerful. But this is the subject of another video detailing what's coming later this year with the launch of Blender 4.0 and the brand new Grease Pencil 3.0. Go ahead and watch it right now. Peace.